Welcome back. If you work and you're a parent, uh, you probably find yourself having to choose uh, your children's needs over work every now and then. Whether you have to get to work a little late, leave a little early, many companies have flex time, flex work schedules to accommodate parents. But at what expense to their coworkers who don't have children? Uh, Kelly Williams joins me to discuss it further. She's the CEO and founder of Work Plus Life Fit, and she's also the author of a new book, Tweak It, Make What uh, Matters to You Happen Every Day. Uh, Callie, thank you so much uh, for joining us. First of all, let's talk about how much more common um, is flex time now. Are there offices, more and more offices that are trying to make this work? Actually, believe it or not, more companies are offering some form of flexibility. I think the trick now is we need to de-parent and de-gender the conversation about work and life because there is a prevailing perception that flex time really is for parents and their priorities come first and others need to sacrifice and cover. But what that doesn't get at is the modern reality that we all need flexibility and support to manage our work and our life. Uh, so do you think that sometimes there are people, there, there's a tension in the office between people who have children and people who don't, and sometimes the people who don't have children feel like they need to step up um, for, for the other. Sometimes there's that built-in tension that doesn't need to be there. Well, I think it's a matter of coordinating with each other and covering for each other better than we do now. And I think ultimately, whether it's for caring for children, whether it's caring for an aging parent, going back to school at night, or even pursuing an avocation that you love, we really can do a better job of working together, all of us, so that the work gets done first and foremost, but that the things that matter in our personal lives also happen. You know, I think ultimately we do coordinate well with our supervisors. Our research shows that seven out of 10 of us do talk to our bosses when we want to work differently, but only 52% of us talk to our colleagues and coworkers. And that's the part that really we have to do a much better okay, job Okay, so how do we, how are we open? How do we, how do we make this work so that we all actually help each other? Well, first and foremost, Rochelle, we have to stop trying to pursue balance. There really is no balance. <laughs> All we can do, I know, right? All we can do is find our own unique work-life fit based on our work and personal realities at a given time. And everybody's work-life fit is different but important to them. And then we need to do a better job of planning in advance the personal activities and priorities we want to work into our week. And look at your work calendar. Let's say, for example, you want to take your mother to the doctor on Wednesday afternoon, but a big project is due on Thursday. You have to start thinking about who you have to coordinate with. Mm -hmm. Um, I, it, it, hopefully it should be that simple because we're, we're all adults and we, we never know when we're going to need someone else to step up for us. So let's try to step up um, for the other person as well. That's just kind of how life works now. Um, Callie William Yost. Callie, thank you so much um, for the advice. I think it's something we can um, all use. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rochelle.